Hello everybody, I am super excited for this week's video. We're gonna be talking about one of my favorite and most used tools. I think it's the most powerful thing that Photoshop has to offer because it's gonna allow us to make super refined selections of anything in your image, no matter the color, the brightness, anything like that. Um, and it's free, it's already pre-installed into Photoshop so you don't have to buy anything, nothing like that. That tool is the color range tool. So I'm gonna be covering everything you need to know about the color range tool in today's super short and brief video. Go ahead and give this tool a try on your next image. Use it to increase the brightness of a certain part of your image, maybe increase the saturation of just a particular part of your image. Whatever you wanna do, give it a try. It's super helpful. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to use it right now. So before you use this tool, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is decide exactly what you wanna change about your image. On this image in particular, I think what I'm gonna show you how to do is if I wanted to adjust the brightness of the pinks in the sky. And so you potentially could do this using a hue saturation adjustment, but this is gonna be so much easier and you're gonna see how many other uses this tool has. So to access the color range tool, I am gonna go up to select and go down to color range. And then I'm gonna get this black and white image here. Now this is a essentially a layer mask. So remember that white reveals, black conceals. So I'm essentially making the layer mask before I've created whatever adjustment I wanna make. Um, you wanna make sure that their selection preview is grayscale rather than uh, black matte, uh, white matte or quick mask. I prefer grayscale. Um, and then I like to check selection here. You can go back to image if you wanted to see um, potentially where to select on the image. Um, and it is also nice to do image because you can uh, see the image in the small square box here and see the mask in the background. So you can go back and forth between the two. Um, but basically what I wanna do if I wanna select these pinks here is click with my eyedropper on the clouds. And then I can adjust the fuzziness. And by adjusting the fuzziness, I'm uh, by lowering the fuzziness, I'm making the mask more selective. And by increasing the fuzziness, I'm making the mask less selective, meaning more of the image is being selected. So remember, I just want to select uh, these pinks in the sky here. And I feel like this is doing a pretty good job. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Now you're going to see all these marching ants load out. And this is loaded out as my selection. So um, let's go ahead. I'm going to... Um, increase the brightness and maybe increase the pinks here. Um, and there's two different ways I can do this. I'm gonna do this using a curves layer. But with these marching ants uh, on your screen, you can go down and create a new layer down here and it will automatically apply that selection as a layer mask. So now you can see my layer mask on my curves layer looks just like this. So now when I adjust this, you can see I'm just affecting the pinks in the sky. Now, uh, what I wanna do here is potentially brighten this just a tad and I could also add some pinks. So I can add more pinks by doing a hue and saturation or on a curves layer, I might just go ahead and open up the reds here and kick in a little more reds. And I don't wanna to do too much here, but that's looking pretty good. You can see how much color I've just kicked in there just using that simple adjustment. And the benefit of doing it that way with that layer mask is that if I didn't use the layer mask, it would look like this. The whole image would look too pink. So by using this layer mask, I've made it so that it only affects the clouds. So another way to use this tool is by selecting luminosity values rather than colors. And this can be great for doing things like increasing shadows, uh, decreasing highlights, and things like that. In this photo, I'm gonna show you guys how I would bring down the highlights in the sky here. So we're gonna go back to select, we're gonna to go to color range. Rather than using sampled colors this time, we are actually going to go to highlights and then we're gonna adjust the fuzziness and range. Now usually I like to bring the fuzziness up to about 85 to 90 and I'll bring the range down after that. By bringing up the fuzziness, it allows the selection to be a little bit softer with less hard edges, which is gonna be ideal. So always bring the fuzziness up and then adjust the range from there. Um, and I think that somewhere about there is looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay and let that load out. All right, and once that's loaded out, you can see once again, I've got the marching ants. Um, I'm going to use another curves layer here. So I'll open curves. You can see it applies as a layer mask and I'm just gonna drag this down. You can see now I'm reducing the brightness of the sky. I'll toggle this. And the best thing is that I've just reduced the brightness of the sky here 
as well as in the reflection. And I haven't uh, messed with the brightness on anything else, uh, such as the pink in the clouds or the dark mountains in the foreground. Now you can use this with many other layers. Um, you can use it with any of these layers, in fact, or any layer that you've created in Photoshop. Um, you're just gonna apply it as a layer mask. So super easy to use if you're using a hue saturation, maybe you're using a brightness contrast, um, maybe you're so no matter what you're using, you can use the color range tool to make a selection. Selections in Photoshop are so important because they're gonna allow you to just adjust a one particular part of your image in order to create a better overall image. All right, everybody, that is a wrap. I really hope that this was a useful tutorial for you guys. This is a tool I use multiple times in every single image that I edit, and it's something that you should definitely be utilizing if you are editing your images in Photoshop. I wanna thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you guys next week. Thank you so much.